game shows. As I'm sure you're all aware, game shows are one of my favourite types of TV show. And for this, this we took we'll be looking at the top ten best game shows, but uh, we're not g going for children's ones, so there'll be no like CBC shows or anything. This is just a list of the top ten best adult TV shows. Number 10 is Catchphrase. I like both the classic version and the modern version. Now, um, there's not an awful lot to say about this show, other than it's just quite a fun show and uh, Mr. Chips, although slightly creepy, it just really does add good visuals. I love how it's a very, it's just not like, you know, word, like words and questions being asked. It's just very visual, sort of cartoonish sort of based. I just think it's quite a fun way to do a quiz like that. Number nine is The Chase, which, you know, essentially just a quiz show, but with a bit of a twist, though. I like, I really like the sort of scare, well, not the scariness of it, but, like, it's quite a sort of a dark atmosphere of, like, all the sort of light, lighting change and the scary music and all that. It just makes, like, a very sort of dramatic show. Like, I just really like the, sort of the format of you know, take a, the chaser takes a step forward if, you know, they get the question right and you have to, you know, not let them catch you. I just think, you know, that's a very interesting way of having a game show, not just like, do you know this stuff? Just knowing the stuff's not enough. You've got to know more than experts. I just think that's brilliant. Number eight is The Weakest Link. Now, I think that the presenter, Anne Robinson, the queen of mean, she's just... Even though she seems kind of nasty, I just think it's really funny how she just sort of insults the contestants. Yeah, I'm sure she's actually a really nice person in real life, but I just think it's just hilarious to like watch her just roast the contestants. Also, I really like how, unlike most like quiz game shows, you don't have to be like a genius to win. It's not about being clever, it's more about convincing the other players that you're clever, but not so clever that they'll tactically vote you out. Yeah, also, I think I really like the idea of, you know, voting one person out each. It's well, it's very similar to Traps, which is obviously one of my favourite game shows of all time. Oh, yes, yeah, I just think it's a very, quite unique format. And it's a chance for, you know, people who aren't, like, you know, tactical masters or geniuses to win. And it's, it's just, it's just very, very, you know, iconic. There's a lot, it's a lot of, it's a lot of TV shows make reference to it in pop culture. Number seven is Total Wipeout. I like this show because it's not just like, it's, you know, it's more physical than it is mental, but it's not all about like, you know, being the fastest person. It's just the first one, it's just like, you know, not being eliminated, but then you've got to sort of consistently be good. So even if you're not the fittest person there, it's still possible to win. It's, it's partly luck based. I think there are lots of just very iconic parts of it from all the big red balls and the, the sucker punch, the uh, sweeper, Crash Mountain, Dizzy Dummies. I think it's just really, really tense, the end of it. The, um, the wipeout zone. It's just very sort of dramatic, and I just think it's re it just looks really fun just to take part in. I mean, you know, I mean, it would be pretty tiring, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I would not win this. But it does just look really fun to just try out. Number six is Would I Lie To You? I mean, you could technically say this isn't really a game show because there's no prize and stuff. But, you know, there is a winner and a loser, so I'm going to count it. You know, I just think it's just really, really funny, like, some of the stories that they tell, especially some of Lee's and David's ones, they are just absolutely insane. Like, they give, like, Lee, like, ridiculous lies, but you just it's just amazing to see how quickly he thinks and just makes it seem if it could possibly be true. I just love the chemistry between David, Lee and Rob. Like, David's kind of like the nerdy one. Lee's kind of like the not-so-clever one. But, I mean, obviously he's, he's actually seems like a bit of a genius, really. And this, I just, and, you know, the guest appearances on it, I just feel it's just a way to just show you, like, the funniest things that have ever happened to you. It's just brilliantly funny. Number five is Don't Scare the Hair, which is one of the most like hated shows of all time. I I really, really disagree with it very, very highly. 
I really don't not see what's wrong with it. It's got a fairly good format, fairly likable, you know, presenter and his robotic sidekick. Fairly fun games. You know, it is a bit of a silly show, but I mean, I don't really see why like they don't like it. I mean, it could be for you know for children, but I mean, adults you know like to have fun. I mean, you know, most of the games, you know do look, you know, a bit ridiculous, but I think they just, but that kind of just adds to the fantasy element of it. It's kind of similar to a lot of children's shows, but I really don't, don't see how anyone can have like, you know, a bad time playing it. You know, I think even watching it, I find it's quite, you know, tense to see like, or oh, will they win the game? Will they not win the game? And, you know, the, all the, and the dramatic final game, it's just, I think the idea of us getting, like, carrots for, you know, stealing head carrots, it's kind of obvious and generic, but, you know, I, I actually really enjoyed it. Um, number four is Room 101. Now, you could technically say this isn't, like, you know, it's like, what I like it, it's not really a game show. I mean, yeah, the classic version isn't, but I've not really seen the classic version, so this is just the new version with Frank Skinner. I just really like the idea of, um, you know, complaining about stuff like each individual celebrity, what they don't like. I just think that's re like a brilliant idea because I mean, who doesn't enjoy ranting about something that they hate? I also just really like this with the visuals of it, the idea of how there being separate categories and then there's like a little model to represent their thing. But I think what really kind of annoyed me when they got rid of the whole sort of category system and got like pictures instead of models which kind of really made it a lot less enjoyable to watch. I mean it's still it's still enjoyable but it was just I just really really liked the whole sort of categories and like the model things of it. Number three is eight out of ten cats does countdown. Now I'm not a huge fan of eight out of ten cats nor am I a huge fan of countdown. But the two together is just so hilariously funny. I mean, yeah, the beginning bit is a little bit long when they show all the prizes, but I mean, it is still enjoyable to watch. And there are just like so many funny moments in it, like when, you know, occasionally the people who like do the act in like the middle of it aren't that good, but sometimes they're just so funny. I feel like the best, not I think the best bit is not the actual rounds. I mean, even though they are quite entertaining, like the numbers round and the letters round, or especially as there are some kind of, there are always a few comedians in it who aren't really that good at it. I think that makes it really funny. I think, I think the, the main bit is like, whenever there's like a game that's like not in the regular show, you know, like carrot in a box or shoots Joe Wilkinson in his penis and testicles. Those are like the funniest moments of the show. And obviously like, you kind of, you can, and I hope how sort of at us at home we can interact as well. We can sort of figure out the stuff. Like and even like the uh, conundrums, like the big conundrum at the end and the conundrums before the ad break, which are always quite cleverly done. Overall, just a very enjoyable show to watch. Number two is The Crystal Maze. I like both the classic version and the modern version. It's just such a good show. I mean, you know this. I've made lots of videos on it. Like, fantasy game shows, I'm sure, you know, as you know, are just some of the best creations ever. I just, I love the idea of having four distinctive different zones. You know, each different, and all the different games. How some games are easier than others. And, you know, some games of different skills. I just also really love the format of it. Like, how... You know, the more the more time you earn, the better chance you have of winning the final game, which is I think is the basis of a lot of game shows. This is the show that really sort of started it all, all these kind of fantasy game shows. And you know, it's just so enjoyable. Like, all the hosts, even Ed Tudor Pole's good, especially although I generally probably prefer Richard O'Brien or Richard Ayuadi. But yeah, you know, I just love it. The set design is amazing. It's just such an amazing show. But it's not number one. There is an even better show than this. But before I get to number one, here are a couple of honourable mentions, well, five honourable mentions. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? 
um, 15 to 1, Pointless, The Cube, and Hypothetical. And the number one best adults game show is Taskmaster. I mean, such, it's like the, generally the best show ever made. Just like Alex Horn and Greg Davies, their chemistry is great. And I also just love how it's not like most other game shows. They don't have like a different person in every, you know, every episode. They have the same five people for the series. So then you can get to know them throughout it. It's kind of also a sitcom at the same time and just it's kind of unpredictable like the challenge is it doesn't really test like any particular skill it's just the randomest things which must take like so much imagination to think of it's all about you know finding like loopholes and stuff on how to win but it's just massively massively entertaining i just love this show it's just you know so well thought of um yeah, apparently it is slightly based on the Crystal Maze of having, you know, slightly sort of different types of games in one show, which I, I do really like the idea of having having them like that. But the fact is, like, they're also reacting to, the fact that they show them on the screen to all the comedians there. They're actually laughing at themselves because they don't know, like, how well they've done it and stuff. It's just, I think it's just show, so, it's just so well sort of, like, timed and just the way that they to display it. It's just brilliant. And that is why... All those reasons why I feel that Taskmaster is the best game show for adults. And any of children, and just all, of all time, really, I would just say, I would genuinely say this could even be my favourite TV programme.